you remember that somebody's mace went off at that gig? I'm Fred Erskine. Um, folks mostly know me from either Hoover or Juno 44, but I've been playing music with loads of different bands for, um, well, I mean, going back to middle school really now, so you know, 35 years or so. And my name's Chris Wilson, and I'm from the Indie Drummer Collective, and this is Drummers Talk to Bass Players. We kind of got to know each other well when uh, your band Justifier did a lot of touring with Ted Leo and the Pharmacy. But you guys were um, great about bringing us along for a couple little, you know, legs of different tours. And we had a ball touring with you guys, man. I remember some really good times. I remember particularly well, like, we did a leg of one of your tours down south and ended up in at Emo's in Austin on Halloween. And we dressed up like you guys for Halloween. That was a lot of fun. That was so great. Yeah. I remember Chris uh, saying, like, how do you guys play in tight pants all the time? Oh, we all had to go get <laughs> That's right. As you know, that's what touring's about, right? Like, when, you, when, when you're on tour and you're going to have support, you want it to be somebody you like, somebody you can have fun with, some you know somebody you're gonna hang out with outside of the shows sometimes whether you you know whatever and so For that sure. made, that that doubles down on the fun of tour like we all you know we, we were big on that with Juno 44 when we start trying to bring friends of ours on support you know how did you start playing was bass your first instrument no um, my I started on the violin when I was about four or five years old. Okay. Um, and that was just something my mom decided she was going to do. Um, like, you're going to learn to play music for whatever reason she had read. And, I, you know, I've heard since then, you know, like they say that music does whatever for your brain. You know what I mean? So she hears like she's going to put her four or five year old kid with a violin because it's going to, you know, whether it, whether that was going to stick with me or not, she thought that, you know, that was just going to be part of my education in life. And um, I didn't stick with it for more than a year or two. Um, and when she was like, you know, my mom was just really very much pushing me to do all these different things. So as soon as I talked her into letting me quit that, she said, okay, we're going to start taking piano lessons. You know what I mean? Yeah. So I did that for a few years and then, um, you know, I think it was like third or fourth grade in elementary. They, there was that day, like you're sitting there. I can't remember if it was in gym class or what it was, but I remember we were in the gym and they bring your whole class in there and they have all these instruments laid out and they're like trying to figure out who's going to be in band or whatever. And like, you know, you get to play the trombone and a saxophone and a trumpet and all that other stuff. And I took to the trumpet. So I started doing that um, through school. It was the first time I had, and I did that. I can't remember if that was third or fourth grade. And I did that all the way through ninth grade. Um, and I quit that for a couple of reasons. Um, but I had already, I think by the eighth grade, had already started my first punk band. Mm -hmm. um, and I think at that point, to me, it just wasn't cool to be in the school band. Yeah. Was basically what it really boiled down to just wasn't cool. So, yeah. um, what was that first band called? Uh, it was called Foam, F O A M, Factory Overruns and Misprints. Great name. And, I was, I, God knows why they asked me to be the singer because I'd never done anything like that. It was just a couple of buddies of mine from middle school that said, we need a punk singer and we think you're it. So that's, that's what I did. And um, I don't know, maybe a year or something like that. And then our bass player decided he wasn't gonna do it anymore. And at some point, we, I think we played without a bass player. I mean, we weren't really doing, we were playing in people's backyards or whatever. You know what I mean? It wasn't like, we, we didn't know how to get real gigs. Um, and still were not really making that connection that we were, it was possible for us to be on those shows that we went to. Like that didn't, I don't know, for whatever reason, that connection wasn't made at that point. Um, but then when I was starting my next band, which were, ended up being, it was called Insurgents, not, New York insurgents that people know about. It was, uh -huh. We didn't even know about them, honestly, at the time. Um, but um, we essentially had a drummer, a guitar player, and me and another guy who didn't play, you know, anything. 
it was, we, I think we flipped a coin to see who was going to have to go buy a base. <laughs> and I lost. So, ah. <laughs> so I had to go buy a base. And I didn't, you know, I, I basically bought the cheapest one in the store. It was, mm. you know, that was the only one. I couldn't really afford any of them. But And was that the um, iconic, that was, now uh, dearly departed Washburn? It was. Yeah. It was the it's my first base and I had it up until a little over a year ago. I mean, and really with a few exceptions where I borrowed other people's bases for either recording or maybe if I've been somewhere on tour and didn't bring mine or whatever, but that's really the only base I've played. Yeah, I've never right. seen anyone else play that style of bass. So that was very you to me. Yeah, and I, I hated that thing. I mean, when I got it, because it was like, <laughs> This is the cheapest base in the store. It's really big and ugly to me. And it was like, <laughs> the headstock was like 4 million pounds. So if you weren't holding on to it, it would just went and it would just slam on the floor. So you had to literally just hold it or it was going to drop. Wow. I guess I could have gotten some other kind of str strap with like a <laughs> I don't know. Wow. I, hated I hated that thing. And then <laughs> at some point, I don't know, maybe around the time that I started playing with Hoover, I started to appreciate the sound I was able to get with it. Just a combination of amp and whatever. And like, I, mm -hmm. I started feeling like it had a, a signature for me or whatever, you know? Yeah. Yeah, amazing sound. And yeah, and you lost it in a studio fire not we too did. long ago, right? We did. We were down last January, um, a couple months before COVID sort of all broke here, rehearsing for a a mini tour for June of 44 and we were down at Sean's studio in Tennessee and it's heated by a wood burning stove and, and actually I mean what the weather wasn't that bad for January I mean it was pretty decent but then we had chucked a few logs in the fire and we actually drove out to the airport to pick up Jeff and by the time we got, got back you know I don't know what it was something sparked I, you know I mean I guess Sean every day puts logs in that thing. Yeah. You know, been fine for years and years. Uh, yeah. Such such it's a bummer. Caught, caught a bad spark. You know? Yeah. You played with a bunch of amazing drummers. Like that's true. Great, great drummers. I think about um, them all the time, actually. You know? I mean yeah. great guitar players too, but I, I think specifically like I, I've been blessed to be play with some of some really fantastic drummers. Yeah, I mean, some of my all-time favorites for yeah. sure. Yeah. Um, but what is the uh, what's a favorite thing about a drummer that you played with? What is a favorite thing? Um, I think I mean, really love all the drummers I've played with. I, I think the, when I played with Chris Farrell in Hoover, it was the first time I really noticed. Like we made a concerted effort to essentially be machine-like together, you mm -hmm. know? And it was the first time I really noticed that sort of chemistry, you know, that bond of rhythm and syncopation together, you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. Feeling like kind of one unit. And um, it's definitely at the time also experience, experimenting with I, mean, I guess I'd always been kind of driven. I always felt like ever since I started playing bass, I never felt like, oh, I'm, I'm not just going to play. I was like, well, I'm just, I'm not, I'm not going to, I'm just, I'm not going to sit and play the rook, you know, I mean, behind the guitar player. Like, I'm not going to be that kind of, I just never wanted to be, but um, Chris really helped me develop a, a way to make that significant in songwriting, I think, that wasn't just, noodly or whatever you know what I mean? yeah because a lot of those hoover songs do like the guitars kind of go on top of mm -hmm. what you do like the rhythm section was definitely a more in front thing than a lot of bands at that time i think mm -hmm. who is your most influential bass player yeah that's that's hard <laughs> yeah i'm sure that's hard there's there's so many but I will say one that got to me early um, was Horace Panther from the specials. 
Oh yeah. Like his playing got to me early, like when I was, I don't know, 13 or whatever. I just wore that record out and just fascinated by how the bass moved those songs. I mean, there's so much, there's so many entrants, a couple vocals, there's horns, there's everything. But I really feel like the bass moves all that stuff. And, um, you know, I just, I think of so many different bass players. I mean, like, like when I started to play bass, when it wasn't just going to be a punk singer or whatever, I mean, people that inspired me were like Mike Watt. That, you know what I mean? People that were just like treating it as, you know, you know, no offense to like the Ramones or the Misfits or any of these great punk bands, but I just wasn't going to be that kind of bass player. You know what I mean? Yeah. Who would be your dream drummer to play with? Oh. I, tell you, I feel I like these last two questions are so hard because like anytime I'm asked something like this, I'm like, what's well, a drummer? Like I can't, I, my mind just goes completely blank. <laughs> you know, I hate social media because I'm, I'm going to put this out there. But so I always thought like to me, I loved Stuart Copeland's drumming. You know what I mean? Yeah. And sometimes on Instagram, I'll just start following people that were like an inspiration or like I follow Horace Panther. Mm -hmm. Instagram just because you know it's great what like he makes paintings like that's oh, that's I love it man but um I don't know I saw like I, I would I think I love Stuart Copeland's style I love that and I um but I don't know that I would want to play with him yeah um <laughs> I'll leave it at that but um I have played a little bit with John Theodore Mm -hmm. um, just briefly here and there and to me he's the dream drummer for anybody yeah he's a badass for sure yeah I remember, you know, I remember hanging out with him one time in the 90s and just i told him i was like do you understand i was like you you were put here for a reason <laughs> you know what i mean yeah has, has that even caught has that even hit you yet right <laughs> <laughs> what it had it yeah, I, I don't know. I mean, yeah. he's, he's humble. Um, all right. So last question. Um, what are you currently working on? You you build things, right? I do. I do a lot of um, custom carpentry. Mm -hmm. um, that's kind of my livelihood. Um, and I've been, I've gone through all kinds of different um, phases of making money being a carpenter from you know doing remodel stuff i was in the union when i first moved here and i was on big construction sites but like oh, currently wow. i have a, a wood shop out back and i build just custom stuff that's kind of what i've fallen into and i love it um mm -hmm. tinkering with music um but it's been hard to work with anybody you know last year or whatever i mean um i have been playing you know since i I've been here in Indiana. I started a group called Freddie T and the People. Mm -hmm. Yeah, Most we played with you all once. Yeah. Once, right? Yeah. yeah Great show. Um, and we haven't played any shows in a few years because I kind of hit a creative wall. Um, but I'm tinkering lately. I'll, I'll probably get back to, together with some of the guys, whether it's called the same thing or not. But, you know, but I also kind of started that just so I had all these songs that were mine mm -hmm. that I could pick up and bring back as I wanted whenever, you know what I mean? Like, I'm not gonna, obviously like I'm sitting here, I'm not gonna go play, you know, a Hoover song or a June of 44 song with a bunch of other guys or whatever. But now I have this bulk of work that I can kind of pull from whenever I want. So probably looking at kicking some stuff around with those guys. And then, you know, once this stuff all lets up, I mean, um, June of 44 is gonna get back to work. We um, are dying to write Mm -hmm. new music together i mean that's 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 kind of the goal we're dying to see kind of where, where that's at right now yeah well i can't wait to see you play again and thank you so much for doing this likewise and thanks for inviting me i'm honored of course all right cheers brad all right cheers